Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today we are back to working on this uh, set of gears for our old Camelback drill press that I'm working on for a viewer. Uh, and there's basically three gears that have to be made in this set. So we've already got two of them knocked out. Uh, this one here on the shaft, this is a second gear. This was uh, actually a gear that was uh, a two-piece set here that was, um, the gear was put, mounted on this shaft here. Uh, broached out, all this is complete. The last step is, is there's a second gear that will press up on a shaft here, uh, and this will be pinned in place, and basically you got two gears side by side. This gear is integral into the shaft. This one here, like I said, it'll be pressed on and uh, pinned in place where it won't move. Now, to do this, I, I checked this material, and this uh, original gear that's on here that is uh, needing to be replaced. It is, was originally made out of cast iron. Uh, I've got a piece of cast iron blank here. This is just some Durabar, um, one inch thick, or a little over an inch thick. Uh, it's a little bit larger in diameter than what it needs to be. We will uh, machine it down to make it work. And uh, that's gonna be the game plan today is getting this last and final gear made. I need to get the gear blank uh, machined, pressed on here pin in place and we'll probably machine it to final size uh, on the diameter, take it over to the middle machine, put the teeth. This again is going to be a 10 pitch. I believe, I need to double check, I think it's 30 teeth is what the number of teeth is on this one. And um, once that's done, uh, we should have this, uh, this set of gears all finished up and ready to go back. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, get over here and get started on the lathe on getting this uh, gear blank ready to mount on the shaft. All right, we're over here at the lathe. I've got my part chucked up in here. We've got the, uh, my jaw is turned around backwards where I'm gripping it on the outside here, but I'm also up against this step in the back. So that'll make sure that even though it's a rough cut, it's gonna be pretty much parallel uh, to the side that I'm cutting here. So when we get ready to face that one off, it should be running pretty true. I am going to start by getting a good square face on this. We're just going to come in here and face it off. All right, looks like we need just a little bit more to completely clean it up there. So we'll just feed in a little bit more. Take a fairly light pass. I think that's cutting all the way around now. And I'm just going to Slowly feed in here, get hopefully a nice surface finish on there. And we should have a good square face to start with. All right. So up next, we need to drill and bore a hole through here for uh, fit up on that stub arbor it will press up on so i'm going to start by putting the center in there that'll just give me a uh, little spot right in the middle to start a drill bit and let me go get a couple of drill bits and we'll start drilling this start with a 3 8 inch drill bit here let's get us a hole through the part All right, we're just going to enlarge that hole. There we go. Continuing on, we're going to bore this the rest of the way out. I'm just going to make a, a little light pass through there to start us out. All right, we're going to start by uh, boring this hole out and touch off. I'm just going to make a fairly light pass here to start off with. Get a good measurement on it and we're going to bore that for a press fit.
Got a uh, bore micrometer here. And we're at about 820, 825, close to it. I'm going to call it 823. 823,000. So I'm going to put that in digital readout. 0.823. And I think for the press fit we need, I need to go to about 0.993. Um, That's what I had a while ago. So we got a fair amount to take out of here. I'll just go ahead and start boring it out. I am taking my time here because I'm trying to, this is going to be a, for a press fit. All right, we're at 75, 85, 90, we're at 991 basically right now. So uh, I just need to get about another uh, hour or two. I think I'm just going to do a spring pass here. I'm not even going to move my... Uh, my cutter i'm just gonna let it go through and just you get a little bit of flex on these boring bars and it's still cutting so i didn't even move the dial Let's see what we got now All right, we're still right there on 991, 992. I don't need much at all. So I'm just gonna barely move my dial here. Yeah, I'd still like to get about one more thou out of it. I don't know, we're right where we... I think we're probably good enough for a press fit. Let me uh, deburr the inside of that hole. And we'll go over to the Arbor Press and see if we can press that on. We are over at the Arbor Press. I've got my gear blank with the... Uh, face side up so it'll match up against the face side on the other gear we will face the outside in an upcoming step here uh, we'll turn it on the arbor i want to just quickly eyeball this make sure i've got that shaft lined up more or less square square i can start it out the better that looks pretty good let's see if we can yeah. Ah, all right. That is pressed in place. And we now have the gear blank on the shaft. We're going to go over there and face this outside and pin it. And uh, we need to turn the outside diameter and cut the gear teeth. Back over at the lathe, I've got the uh, blank here now mounted on the arbor. It is in the four jaw chuck, I've already dialed this in, basically no run out on the original shaft. Now what I wanna do is I wanna face this uh, gear off. We need to be one inch thick or right there at it. Uh, we're a little bit wide right now, about 30 thousandths uh, needs to come off that face and should be pretty much flush with the arbor down there. So uh, I'm gonna make fairly light passes because I'm not pinned yet. So theoretically, it could uh, spin on that shaft. I don't think it will because of the press fit, but uh, we're not gonna take any chances. We're just gonna face it off here. Let's 
see where we're at now that we got a clean face. And I got about eight thousandths that seems to come off of it. I'll just dial it in on the digital readout. Face it again. Check our thickness again, and we're right on one inch. Good deal. So to pin this gear in place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill and tap a couple of quarter 28 uh, holes here, and we will just put a set screw in here. The set screw, we're going to put it right on the margin between the, the gap between the two, so it'll be half in the shaft, half into the uh, gear blank. I'm going to do two of these uh, directly across from one another. What this will do is it will serve as a key to keep that shaft from, uh, or the gear from spinning on the shaft. And also because it's threaded, uh, it'll keep that from walking off as well. It's gonna grip it all the way around. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and put a couple of those in. Got my um, center drill here just to kind of get me started. And I just wanna put that right on that gap between the two. And just a dimple to start the, the drill. And because we're going quarter 28, uh, we will use a number three drill bit. And we'll just drill us a hole down through there. Should be deep enough. And we're gonna go 180 degrees on the super spacer here. I've got it set up on 45 degrees right now. So that should be directly across. And we'll just do the exact same thing again. And there we go, we got our holes drilled. I'm just gonna hand tap those over in the vise and uh, we can put those uh, keys in. Go ahead and tap these. Uh, I did put a little anchor lube in there just for some lubrication while I'm tapping here. All right, I think we bottomed out there. Same thing on this side. Put a little Loctite on these uh, set screws so they don't go anywhere. Whoa. And those are locked in place. We're all mounted up over here in the lathe again. I've already got this running true. This is currently about 
four and one eighth inches in diameter. Um, we've got to take it down to 3.2 inches, 3.200. 0, 0. So uh, we're going to come in here and start cutting that down. Touch off. Yeah, I'm just going to take about a hundred thousandths off of it. Should be getting pretty close here. And we're at um, 3.24. I'm gonna let that cool down, measure it, and we'll finish it up here in a minute. We have cooled down. I feel good where we're at here. I'm gonna use a micrometer now and check this diameter just to make sure I'm getting a really good measurement. And we are at, see we're at three inches, 200, that's 25 plus 10 and a half, so be 235 and a half. And let me put that in my digital readout. 2.2355. All right. Now, what I wanna do is take this down to 3.2. Take about half of that. We'll measure it again. And uh, clean it up on the last pass. Check our measurement again. take the whole amount this time. This should take us down to 3.2 inches. And we're right on the money. Good deal. Let's chant for those edges on that. Now we're ready to take her to the dentist and put some teeth on there. Meet the dentist. This is what we're gonna to use to put the teeth on the gear with. Uh, I've got my Kearney Tracker Model 3H horizontal milling machine and we are set up for uh, cutting gear teeth. So I've got over here a uh, Kearney Tracker Model H dividing head. Uh, this one here is currently set up for doing 30 teeth. So I've got a plate on here and basically uh, we're going one full turn and one third of a turn. And so it's this one here, I'm on a, what is this? This is a 32, so I'm on a 39 plate, one turn and 13 teeth uh, will be what I, I'm, I index in on this. And uh, because this is a 40 to one ratio, so 40 turns makes one full turn of the head that comes out to 1 30th of a increment each time. Uh, over on the arbor, we have a uh, cutter in here. This is for a uh, 10 pitch gear. Uh, so we've got a, a 10 diametral pitch uh, involute cutter in here. This is the, uh, what is this? This is the number four cutter in the set, which is the cutter that's needed for cutting 30 teeth. And uh, we're, we're already centered up. I've already touched off. I've actually already raised it up. We're going to do it again in two passes. Uh, total depth of cut is 220 thousandths of an inch uh, off of just, just the, the touching off the top. Uh, I've got 150 thousandths dialed in now. That's going to take the bulk of the metal out of the first pass and we'll come back into a second pass, clean it all up. And uh, we're ready to roll. So let's, uh, let's cut some teeth. All right, we're on 124 RPMs, uh, three and three eighths inch per minute uh, feed rate, which is what we've been doing on the other gears we've cut in here. I'm gonna put a little drop of cutting oil up on there and we will 
feed this in and see what it sounds like. You're cutting cast iron, this stuff's pretty soft to cut, so um, sounds just fine. All right, nice cut. Once we're all the way through, we'll reverse, come back out, and we will index our head. One turn, 13 teeth, and make another pass. And this is one of these uh, rinse and repeat operations. Uh, we're going to have to make 30 cuts on this initial one, and then we'll raise the table up that last little bit, make 30 more cuts, and uh, we should have everything done. So um, just a matter of taking the time and do it. We will um, get this job done and bring you guys back here in a little bit. We'll let you watch a few cuts before we, uh, before we get out of here. Last tooth here. On this pass, uh, so after this one, we will raise the table up, make another round, and we should have everything to depth. All right, we're at 150 thousandths on our depth. I'm gonna unlock my table. We're going to 220. I'm just going to read off the dial here. So come back around to zero. That should be 200 thousandths. And then I need another 20 thousandths. Oops, a little bit too far. Right there. We'll lock our table back down. And we should be uh, to final depth here. Get her rolling again. And uh, we should be ready to make a cut here. I'm going to go ahead and put a little cutting oil in that tooth. And this should be, like I said, to final depth. We'll need to make another run all the way around this. And that should form that involute shape that we need for that gear. Give us the right profile and everything we need. Sounded good. Index our gear around. Make another pass. guys another view here. We'll index that around. Put a little dab of oil in there, cutting oil. And we'll cut that tooth right out of there. All 
right, we're through cutting. Come back out and we'll index the dividing head on the tooth. And here we go again. that finished cutting back out and this uh, should be the last gear last tooth to cut a little squirt of oil there Splitting the difference, just like what we want, right down the middle. And with that, we are all done. Well, here we go, guys. One new set of gears. Here are the old ones. Uh, we're going to send all this stuff back. Um, these uh, mesh up really nicely. Let's see going that way they're all the same pitch so they should all mesh with one another just fine and they do and uh, these are nice brand new teeth all ready to go so I think this job is complete uh, three gears uh, to replace the old worn out broken teeth on these and uh, should have some nice brand new gears to go back on that drill press and get her back up and going Another project knocked out, uh, turned out nice. I kind of enjoy doing gears. Uh, this is always some kind of fun for me. Uh, enjoy using the horizontal milling machine. Uh, and I don't know, just the, there's something satisfying about cutting out gear teeth, at least there is to me. So I really enjoyed this job. We will get these headed back to their owner. We'll let him get his machine put back together and hopefully this will get him set up and ready to roll. He'll be in good shape going forward with his restoration. And uh, we can move on to another project here in the shop. I got a big pile of them that need to be knocked out. So uh, we'll figure out what's coming up next and uh, get over on that. Guys, with that, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are always greatly appreciated. Really helps feed the algorithm over on YouTube to help people uh, find my videos and stuff. Uh, as always, a big, huge thank you out there to all the supporters of the site who support the site on Patreon and PayPal, etc. Uh, we really could not bring you all the content we do without all the support that we get from you, our faithful viewers. And with that, guys, uh, we will catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.